Hello everyone. So in the previous videos, I have shown you how to do multiple regression analysis. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to check for multicollinearity in a regression analysis. So the first question is what is multicollinearity? Or we should maybe first focus on what is collinearity. So in a regression model, we would normally expect our dependent variables and independent variables to have some level of correlation, right? But we don't want our independent variables to be correlated with each other. But independent variables should have correlation with the dependent variable. That's okay. That's what we want, right? So how can we test for collinearity? So the first thing we can do is we can look for the correlation matrix. So in the correlation matrix, what we will do is we will look into the correlation between the independent variables. All the independent variables should have below 0 0.75 or 0, below, below 0 0.8 correlation. So if our independent variables have a correlation higher than 0 0.80, then we have a problem. And even if we have higher than 0 0.90, then we have a big problem. That means highly correlated independent variables. And we don't want that. Okay, that would simply mean that instead of using two variables, which are highly correlated, we could use just one of them as the independent variable. Okay, so that's what normally collinearity means. And the first thing we can do to look for this is we can simply make a correlation matrix. Okay, let's first make a correlation matrix. So here, you know, this is our main independent dependent variable and these are my independent variables. Okay, so these independent variables should have a low correlation among themselves. So I go to analyze and then I go to regression and then I go to linear. Then I define my model. This is my dependent variable and these are my independent variables. So I will select this one and press shift and select the last one. So I select all of them and put it in the independent box, right? Then in the statistics to look for correlation matrix, I will mark this one. And also another way to look for correlation is the collinearity diagnostics. We will talk about that. That is the most important one. So I will check that one as well. So I get both of them at, at, as, at once and then we will see. So now I click continue and I am not going to talk about the others at the moment. And then I'm going to click OK. And here you see I'm using the enter method. So enter means it will run. It will estimate the model that I have entered. Uh, in the next video, I will talk about the stepwise remove and uh, other other methods of regression, uh, def defining the regression model. But now, for now, we will go for OK. So our model is estimated. Here are the R squares. For the interpretation of basic regression estimation, watch my previous video. But here, we will focus on this part here, collinearity and VIF and tolerance, and also in this part. So as I mentioned earlier, first we will look into the correlations here. So these are our correlations. So here on the diagonal, I have this one, one, right? One, one, one. So because the same variable will have the same correlation, one correlation with itself. So here, let's say, for instance, this one, if I look at temperature in Celsius, it does not have anything higher than 0 0.7, even does not have anything higher than 0 0.5. Uh, here also no, here also no. So actually, I think I do not have a problem. My highest is 0 0.62. It should not indicate a problem. Okay. So I actually think I don't have a problem of uh, collinearity here in the in this study. But now the problem is here, this is bivariate uh, correlation, right? So it's only two variables. And that can tell us about collinearity, but not multicollinearity. Because sometimes it may happen that two or three of the independent variables, when they are regressed together on an independent variable, they are highly associated with another independent variable. So maybe they are not one by one connected, but when two or three of the independent variables are uh, put together in the model, maybe they together as a group has a very high correlation with another independent variable. So that is the multicollinearity problem, okay? When you talk about the multiple independent variables. So to test that, we will normally look into these metrics here, the tolerance and the VIF, okay? So what does tolerance normally mean? So to estimate the tolerance value, what we would normally do is, we, we can do it in two steps. Step one, regress 
all independent variables on each other. Step two is to calculate one minus r square for each of the, the regressions. Okay. So what do we mean by that? So for instance, this value here, 0 0.571. So in this case, it means, so first what we did, we regressed all these independent variables on a store size. Okay. So this was our dependent variable. Okay. And then we got a R square. And most likely our R square value is 0 0.43. Okay. So most likely it was 0 0.43 in this case. Okay. 0 0.43. Then what we did, we deducted this R square value from 1. 1 minus 0 0.43. And then we get 0 0.43. 0.571, right? So that's the value we get here. So the tolerance value, it means that the portion, the portion of variance of this independent variable not explained by other independent variables. Okay, the same for this one. So in this case, what, 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 what does this value means is that we regress this is this will become our dependent variable okay and then all the other independent variables are regressed on this and then that explains the other independent variables explains about 49 percent variation of price of product so then what we did we deducted 0 0.49 from one and then we got a tolerance value of 0 0.511 and that's how it is calculated for all the independent variables right and we want this value to be as high as possible okay because the higher value not explained by other independent variables combined means the lower chance of multicollinearity in our study design okay and vif is simply one divided by so vif is simply one divided by tolerance one divided by tolerance okay so for instance, for the first one, in this case, we have one divided by 0 0.57. And then we get 1.75. That's the value here, right? So likewise, all the values are calculated. And normally in literature, it is recommended that a VIF value of zero, uh, VIF value below five indicates no severe multicollinearity problem. There is not really a like very clear good value. Some argue it should be below five and some argue it should be below 10. But normally if you have the VIF value below 10, it should be fine. Okay, but normally like for in this case, you see we have all of them below, like the highest one is 3.65. So we have all of them below four. So here we do not have any multicollinearity problem in the study okay so thank you for watching this video i hope now you have a clear idea of what multicollinearity means and how to how to how to look for it and how to solve it and normally if you have a multicollinearity problem the first thing i would do is i would just remove that variable we will see one variable with a very high vif value i will remove that variable or otherwise if i have too many variables with a high vif value maybe they should be used as a factor. Then I would normally do a factor analysis and aggregate those variables and use as a factor. And then I will use the factor as an independent variable. So in the upcoming videos, I will also show you how to do factor analysis. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it useful, uh, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.